Good morning, sports fans. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Saad Shah, and this is lesson two of learning about particles and fusion. Pardon the voice. Got a bit of a cold here. Let's see if we can power through it. If you're new to particles, make sure to work with lesson one, introduction to particles. It's a detailed, beginner-friendly first step in particle effects, and it is paced slow so you can work along with it. This tutorial builds on the last one and assumes you know the basics, so I'll be a bit quicker and to the point. I'll explain any new techniques in detail which were not already covered before, such as depth of field blur. And as always, the source code is linked in the description so you can download my nodes and look at all the settings. If you're not a fusion artist, you can still grab the video file for free and use it in your choice of software. Today we're recreating P2 from my free fusion backgrounds playlist. We will look at depth of field blurring, multiple particle systems, animating particles in 3D space, as well as some basic color work. Let's go ahead and fire up P2 from YouTube. Here's the finished product. As you can see, there's two different sizes of particle systems, and there's some z-axis movement of the particles, which we're going to use to our advantage when we are working with depth of field blur. And if you look at the description underneath, you'll have these links where you can download the video file for free, or you can also get the source code. That's what we're gonna do right now. Now, when you look at the source code, it's just gonna be simple text. All you have to do is control A to select everything and copy it. And then you can create a new file on your own computer. Call it whatever you want. And paste the code in here. Go ahead and save the file. And now you have the code. Next, we're going to fire up DaVinci Resolve and create a new session. Project settings 1920, 1080, 30 frames per second sounds good. On the edit page, we're going to take a fusion composition and drop it onto timeline. Place the playhead on top of the fusion composition and go to the fusion page by hitting Shift 5. We can delete this media out node and go ahead and right click on the flow area and hit paste. All right, now that we have the code, we can go ahead and click on this output node, which is media out, and view it in our viewer. Let's go to the edit page and change the clip duration. Shift 4, right click on the fusion clip, change duration to 60 seconds. This is how long I made it. Let's see what's going on here. Moving from the left to the right, the first node we have is a black background. Let's go ahead and click on Inspector. And if you go here to the second tab, you can see that the black background, which is the first node, is driving the resolution of our composition. So this dictates the size and sets the canvas size for the composition at 1920, 1080. And down here, this is where you would define the color space that you're working in. Next up, from the black background, there's this Perlin noise, uh, fast noise, uh, as it's called in Fusion, or fractal noise, as it's called in After Effects. Ken Perling is a professor of uh, computer science at NYU, and he received an Academy Award in 1997 for his procedural texturing techniques uh, used in Star Wars. Let's go ahead and hit play. I don't know if you can see this here, but this is going to give us a slight movement in the background, bit of a texture. Next up, we have a small particle system here. Let's go ahead and pull it up and hit play. As you can see, these are the tiny particles that are filling up the background just to give it some depth. There's a particle emitter, a renderer, and a small amount of glow applied. Next up, Welcome to the heavy metal part of the show. This is where the action is. All right, there we have it. So in the second particle system, we have this circular bitmap shape uh, with the little ring, and that's what's creating these bigger particles. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, depth blurring going on here, which we're going to talk about today. Additionally, we also have some glows applied in sequence here on this note tree. Now, all the way at the end, there's this post-processing node tree, and the first thing that's happening here is there's a color corrector node. This is desaturating the image 
just a little bit and adjusting some of the uh, color parameters. After that, we have a little blur, which is acting on the edges, kind of like a vignette. And then some film grain. And then finally the output. So this is the finished product that we have. Now that we have a good picture of the overall project, let's go ahead and start over and build this from scratch. Step one, we're going to create a black background. Connect this to our media output node. Rename the nodes. Click on the background, make sure it's black and the correct size. All right. Next, we're going to create a fast noise FN and connect it to the background. This will automatically create a merge for us. If you hit play now, you can see that the fast noise will animate by increasing the seed rate. We're going to go into the color options for the the fast noise, and we're going to choose two shades of purple. Okay, tweak them a little bit. That looks good. And as you can see, that this fast noise is moving in the background. Let's go ahead and tweak the settings. Detail 5, contrast 2.7, scale 2.35, and just a touch of seed rate. Here we go. Perfect. Now we could just blend this down by clicking on the merge and bringing down the blend to about half. Next, let's create the small particle system. And let's get to work. First things first, I'm going to choose rectangle as the emitter shape, which is going to cover the whole area. In the emitter settings, I'm going to choose number of particles per frame 5, lifespan 200, variance 100. Let's go on over to velocity. Give it a touch of velocity. And now you can see these particles will start moving. Okay. So by default, they're moving from left to right. What I want to do is I want them to move in Z depth. Go to angle Z, 270. And I don't want them all moving in the same direction towards me. So I'll give it some variance. Here we go. Next up, let's go to the Style tab. We're going to choose Engon. Then we're going to go ahead and choose the color. We'll give it some alpha. And in the color variance, I'm going to give it some alpha variance as well. Let's go to the size. Size variance, and then give it some fade. If you're not familiar with these controls, make sure to check out the uh, lesson one, which talks about these basic particle controls in detail. Next, I'm going to go into the renderer and I want to pre generate some particles. So I'm going to hit 30. Let's click on P render. And bring up a glow, and the default values of uh, this node are just fine for our needs. All right, time to make the big particles. Welcome to the heavy metal part of the show. And we can merge this with this one here. Now we're going to do a couple of new things in this lesson that we didn't talk about in the last one. So first of all, we're going to create a custom image for the particle, a particle cell or a particle sprite, whatever you want to call it. 
All right, let's move this to the side, pull up a new viewer. This up in here. Put an elliptical mask on it. We can change the color. Change the size of the mask. And I also want a ring. So another mask. This one is not going to be solid. It's actually going to be the border. And then I can change the size too, like that. Hold down the control key to make small changes, like that. This looks about right. All right, now we can just go ahead and hit Control G. This will group it up. There's our sprite. Now we're going to go into the emitter, style tab, and choose bitmap. This is going to give us this new input so we can put the new image as our particle cell. We don't need the second viewer anymore. All right. Let's go ahead and set up the second particle system now. Region, we're going to choose rectangle. Let's go ahead to the style tab and change the color. In the main color, I'm going to leave it as white and I'm just going to reduce the alpha to give it some transparency because my main color is going to come from color over life. This is another concept that we didn't talk about in the last tutorial. We're going to go ahead and choose a light purple. Click on the bar to pick another color. We're going to darken that and then the darkest one. So, what I want is just a touch of this lighter shade with most of the um, life of the particle spent with these darker shades. And I'm also going to give it some alpha variance. All right, let's go ahead and change this, the size. 0.1 for the size, 0.25 for the variance. Let's give it some fade. About that much. And some blur. Now, instead of giving it a two dimensional blur, we're going to give it some Z depth blur. 0 0.1. So, what's happening here is that the blur is like a camera lens blur, which is dependent on where the object is, how far the object is compared to the lens. This is where you're going to control when the blur is acting and when the sharp image is acting. Okay, so changing the blur isn't really affecting our composition right now. And the reason is we haven't set the velocity yet. So the particles aren't moving towards us or moving away from us. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go with number five. Lifespan 500. And I want to link the lifespan variance to the lifespan times one and a half. So I'm going to hit equal, enter. This gives me a pick whip, a simple expression. I can connect this to lifespan times 1.5. Now, if I change the lifespan, it will change the variance as well. Close that. Let's go into velocity. Very small amount of velocity here.
some variance. And the most important thing here is the z-angle. The z-angle is what's going to move the particles back and forth in z-axis. So it's going to bring it closer to you and away from you. All right, this is starting to look pretty good. Let's turn off the nodes and the inspector. So really nice detail in the blur right here. And it's all based on the animation of it moving back and forth. I do want to do some color work on this. So let's go ahead and pull up a CC node. Pull down the saturation quite a bit. Increase the contrast. And I really want to crank up the gain and turn down the brightness. That's the look that I'm going for in this composition. Next, I'm going to bring in a blur node. All right, next we're going to give it a blur vignette. So what I want to do is create... Don't want an ipsoidal vignette. I actually want a rectangular one. So let's do that. Click on the show controls. Let's make this bigger. And I'm going to give it a little bit of corner radius and soft edge. All right, so basically this blur is only going to act on the outside. Let's go ahead and invert to while we're at it. Okay, there you go. Just about that much. And last, some film grain. Turn it down. There we have it. Make sure we have the Fusion View LUT on. And we can go ahead and render this. There you have it, guys. Hope this video was useful to you and you learned something new. Let's keep the conversation going and support our Fusion community. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Happy compositing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.